Yeah. All right. Boom. There it is. Yeah. So normally I just sit here and you know BS around for a little bit, right. and then and then one thing will pop up. Now. All right, and we got one viewer now. Here we go. Welcome to the camp. <laughs> right. This is like the buffer period. Yeah. Yeah. No, we it, can loosen up and get used to being live. For yeah. A only the people that are rewatch it will see this part. And they're like, these guys are ridiculous. <laughs> I really like them. Well, that so was let's funny. Go ahead and, uh, let's get well, the messing up out of the way. There it is. Yeah. There, see, we got two now. Oh, now right, we cool, we cool. are on, man. Jen Corb. Oh, what's up, girl? Jen, Look at that. what's up? All right, killing it. She killing texted it. me out of the blue the other day. April Rackley, get get to work. What are you doing? <laughs> I'm currently at work right now. Yeah, I'm about to say, get to work, April. Man, on your double. What the heck, man? That guy needs some more water and a side of lemon. She's making money. I like it. I love it. Well, um, welcome to episode two, M and M and M's. Welcome, right? Marketing, music, and musings. We got your boy Fico Escalante over here. So basically, I just created a podcast where I just invite all my good friends on it, and uh, and then we talk. So, um, what we'll do is the normal layout is basically we talk about. I, I have marketing in there, but it's just marketing because it's M, right? But we like to talk about business, and then we'll talk about music. And then we'll jump into musings, which can be a litany of things. So, got Fico. Appreciate him coming over, spending some time with us. Um, Fico is the co-founder of Latin Atlanta Cleaning Company. They do residential and commercial cleaning. So, if y'all need something, you can either DM him, because I put his name in there. It's all highlighted and pretty for you. You can send me a message. I'll send you his phone number, all the good stuff. But they take care of Metro Atlanta. Does a fantastic job. He also hires all of our friends. So if you're looking That's for a part time job, true. if you're looking for work, <laughs> let me know. If you're looking for a part time job and you're not a full on bum, he will take care of you and you might have a job, right? Yeah, not, so. not being a bum is a requirement <laughs> yeah. for the position. Yeah, you could also be a little bit of a bum if you want to be. <laughs> so, um, but tell me a little bit about how I don't even know the story. How did you guys end up even getting into this whole thing? Well, I've, uh, I've been in business since uh, since I was like a teenager. You know, there was always, my family's always kind of had their fingers in some form of business where it was, you know, my sister had uh, the optica. She used to sell glasses when she was studying to be uh, an eye doctor. And then uh, my dad had Escalante Corporation when I was young. When we moved Fancy. to Florida. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, I want to buy whatever y'all sell. Oh, dude. You know what I'm saying? They used to sell the good stuff. Yucca. <laughs> they used to, they used oh, to ship in all the... fries? Uh, yeah, yeah. All the okay. vegetables from uh, Honduras and Costa Rica, the tropical stuff. Oh. Uh, that's what he would do. Uh, so, you know, we've, we've always kind of had... Growing up, like someone always had a business. You know, my brother is the same way. My brother had Denoise, a club out in Honduras. He's got Max Stage right now. He just opened up a gift shop out in Roatan, killing it, uh, killing it, I don't, selling shirts I don't and want, glasses like a boss. I don't want to derail this, but this made me remember. So, whenever we all used to play StarCraft, right? Charles had uh, his name was Denoise. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah, he got it from the club. That's the same club. I love it. All right, sorry. Yeah, go, no, go back no, but anyway, so uh, just a heavy business influence from the beginning. Uh, I did the uh, landscaping thing. I did the car washing thing, mobile car washing. That, that, so, all right, so we'll pause there. So I remember whenever you told me you were doing all that, right? And I, I'm driving right now, in my mind, I remember I was on uh, 90, or what is it, 41, and you're like, yeah, man, I just got done detailing this dude. Then I'm detailing this car, man. And then this other dude, bro, I'm detailing that dude's car. I'm like, dude, this bull is hustling. So uh, I remember that uh, very, very uh, vividly. It was so, good times. It, it was fun. You know, that uh, when you're 19 and 18, you, you think that that business is going to get you rich. You know, that's the mentality. All you of know? them. Yeah. All the business. You, you think yeah. that, like, by the time you're 30, you're, you're probably going to be retired, you know? <laughs> No, just, yeah, you, just, you've already retired. All, yeah. Yeah, you retired twice now. Yeah, what That's, do you do, business? Yeah, you know bro, what I mean? Yeah. Where's, where's the main money came from Taco Mac, but, you know, it's like, <laughs> I was an entrepreneur. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> Bro, I'm an entrepreneur, but I serve tables, queso, yeah, you know, specifically. To, to pick up a little bit uh, a little bit extra, I uh, work at Taco Mac, you know, except for it was 90% of my income. So. Yeah. Um, but, no, you know, from there, I, I moved over to Huntsville. Uh, once my uh, my ex-wife got pregnant, and in Huntsville, I, I jumped into construction. So, uh, construction. Right. Working was, for, weren't you working with Wayne? 
Yeah, yeah. He uh, he was renovating a big project called Lincoln Mills over there, and you're taking oh, an old yeah, yeah, textile yeah, yeah. mill, and they were turning it into office space okay, and, I remember and now. lofts and really cool stuff. But okay. um, anyway, I uh, I kind of fit into a cool little spot there where I was on the window crew. And that eventually turned into kind of doing a little bit of everything, whatever needed to be done. But uh, I ended up getting like a pretty substantial size uh, crew working for me. And and once you see that like there's a way to make money when you're not actually working, you know, <laughs> like when you could see that uh, you, you could double up, double dip, you could be cleaning, making labor pay and also money from someone else. You know what I mean? Right. Cleaning. It, it's easy to just sit back, plan appropriately and try to... Uh, you know, in construction, it, it could have been two different crews doing two different things, or in my case, windows. You know, we, we would have three, four, five, six window crews going at the same time. So and that's that was, cleaning the windows, not yeah. installing them. Uh, well, no, that was actually tearing down the old stuff, uh, painting, putting insulated oh, paints cool. and sealing right. uh, the whole nine. Yeah. So, and these are those right. uh, like 10 foot by 15 foot windows, the, uh, the big red ones that you see on mills. You see oh, them around yeah, Atlanta, yeah, yeah. Too, like yeah. like Brumby down yeah, there in yeah. Marietta. Exactly yeah. like Brumby. That's what we were doing. We were Brumby, but you know that was. But, that was but yeah, in Huntsville. Yeah, cool. Yeah. So that kind of got me into construction, which um, you know the money was good, and it kind of taught you how to go out and figure things out on your own. Uh, the the real secret was kind of not saying no to anything. You know, you, you at the beginning you don't really know much, right? Like maybe you're good at painting, or maybe you're good at drywall, or maybe you're good at one thing, but. Um, but you want to learn them all. You know, you don't want to turn down money, especially when you're a yeah, small business. Yeah, you are, yeah. especially if you're already out there, too. You're like, I don't know, man. I'm going to try it. Yeah. You yeah. want to know how much you want to pay? I'm going to give it a go. Yeah. So uh, that kind of transcended to uh, to construction here in Atlanta. And then from there, I I just hopped into cleaning. My, You know, I knew the industry because my mom has used me to translate since I was like 15. It's what she did her whole life. So, uh, you know, I started off working with her. I was still doing construction on the side over here, small gigs, and uh, from there I was picking up my own clients, and uh, we just kind of merged. You know, it's uh, we turned into one big business. You know, my employees, nice. her employees, my clients, cool. her clients. And See, then, I don't even uh, know that. Yeah, now we're here, so this is about six, seven years, and it's it's been awesome. So I love it. Yeah. And then you worked at the UPS store. For yes, a little while there, because yeah. then we met our boy Kevin Vaughn. Kevin Vaughn. I haven't seen him in years, but oh I still love God, him. Oh my God, if you're listening. Just in case. Him, I miss yeah. him. You better call me, man. You know, yeah, he we missed, missed uh, West yeah. Palm. Yeah, uh, yeah he's in like UPS luxury store. real estate now. He's like, look at this waterfall. Oh, oh look at, don't you, and I'm under it now. Yeah, good for him. But yeah. you know what, though? He's, I love it. he's one of those, I, I don't know how he's doing, but I can guarantee you he's doing well. Yeah, he's doing you know something I mean? like, and, I, I and smiling. I haven't checked up on him, but he's one of those people that has always, man, he was overwhelmingly positive, you know what I mean? And he knew what he wanted, you know? Uh, his whole Instagram was basically a digital, like, vision board, you know what I mean? Like what, true, you just, yeah. what, what you just said right now, you know? He was into luxury real estate. Well, hell, he was doing that back when we were boxing shit, you know what I mean? Like, right, in, oh, yeah. at the UPS store. Right. He knew that's what he wanted, you know? He was posting on Instagram like he was already a big baller, you know? And, uh, this is and smart. Dude, great, he was yeah. doing it before anybody else knew that. You know, if you built that whole brand, like he actually built uh, his own personal brand before yeah. people were like, you should build a personal oh brand. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Like, you're like, dang, bro. Before, yeah, before it was a thing, you know? I mean, this it's all fairly new. You know, anyone who, who wants to come in and say that they're a, uh, you know, master, an expert in digital marketing, that may be so. But remember, you haven't really done it for much more than four or five years. That's true. Like, yeah. you, know, you know, maybe you, you're maybe still you know a grasshopper, people, bro. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's new. YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. Well, I think it's interesting, too, because obviously I'm in advertising and, and marketing and things like that. And uh, I've been doing it for almost a decade. But my medium is mail, right? And so, I mean, it's been it's been around since freaking the Pony Express, son. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. By the way, trivia. The only vehicle that doesn't have to stop at a stoplight or a stop sign is a postal worker. Oh, They can really? just blow right through it. Oh, yeah. That's Cops, nice. That's nice. ambulance, firefight, they all got to stop. Yeah. In they case y'all are wondering. At, uh, at every mailbox, though. Yeah, but, that, but, they, yeah, but then they have to make up for all of the red lights that they run through just at the all the mailboxes. Yeah, <laughs> so it depends on, yeah. depends on what you want to do in your out, life. Right? Yeah, that's a, good, that's a really good point. Yeah, that's awesome. But uh, but it is kind of funny because then, you know, since I've been doing this for a while, people come up and they're like, yeah, man, he's a digital marketing expert. I'm like, oh, how long has he been doing? Man, three and a half weeks. You're like, 
probably actually true though. He probably figured out something, and he is probably an expert that you know he knows something somebody doesn't know. You I, know I, what I mean? I say this, and I, and I am I'm, I'm, I know it's hypocritical, but it can't be that hard. But I also don't know how to do it. So you know what I mean? It's uh, there's yeah, it's, it's, it's a... like a, there's it, I feel like it's. It's like a switch, right? It's something that once you go into it, you're just like, oh, man, all these people don't know this secret. Right. All these people don't know how easy this is. Because if you look online now, and this may be because I'm into different courses and I'm always like following kind of like educational rabbit holes wherever they come out. But um, it's good for you. Yeah. Like Facebook advertises digital marketing certificates and classes to me constantly. You know, right. like I'm, I'm they, thinking, they want you to do it. Like, yeah, but I'm thinking it's a new thing, right? Everyone's right. like, just take my master course, yeah, you know. Well, it's funny. It's like, it's kind of like everything, I think. And, and I mean, think about most occupations. It's really not that hard. There's not a lot of things besides like brain surgeons and people writing code. And even people that write code are like, this was easy. Like, yeah, I think it's like, do you know English? Yeah. Right. Can you speak in English and write in English? Yes. Yeah. Do you know Python? Yeah. Can you speak in Python? Yeah. Right. You know, it's very, it's like, can you, yeah. can you type a zero? Yes. Can you type a one? Yeah. Can you have a one behind that? And then a zero? Know is what yeah. I'm trying to say, you know? Yeah. But I just think the human mind is interesting because it, Basically, all the stuff that we know, somebody's like, man, that's easy, you know? <laughs> yeah. I, I think about it, you know? Yeah. So maybe it's like everything else in life. Everything's kind of really simple. You just got to put in some time and then and then figure it out. Yeah, I think but, that's what college is, is actually there for. Because, right. uh, you know, if, if my college experience was like anyone else, or everyone else's, uh, at the beginning of every class, you're like, this is impossible. And then at the end of the class, you're like, I got it. I'm the smartest person in this freaking school. That's right. you know I'm I mean? about like, to be a doctorate yeah, yesterday. Yeah, yeah. By, yeah. by the end, you know, uh, all those, the crazy, you know, differential equations, linear algebra, all those crazy names they stop like being scary you're just like oh we're gonna start at the beginning somewhere and then we're gonna work through it and get to the end somehow yeah you know? well it still sounds scary to me because you're like yeah man i'm gonna go and be an, uh, an engineer i'm like oh man that sounds crazy and you're like listen to this course i'm taking <laughs> i'm like bro did you turn into a robot what what the oh you still think oh, okay no you're still good okay here you go guarantee you that there's nothing i know that i can't teach you right like it's it's one of those things in life you know it's yeah. it's, it's almost like a decision you know like i'm gonna i decide to put myself through this torture and come out a smarter person you right know? you're like i'm gonna pay for this torture yeah. but it Dude. sucks the torture right. sucks you know yeah. a lot of people i wonder you know i bet i would like to see the statistics and i'm sure they're impossible to gather but the statistics of people who buy into a class or a course or hell a gym membership or anything that's like an extended period of time and they don't get like past a week or two or a month for the real fighters yeah, but really you know true. what i mean like it's it's common you know i did think about that it's kind of uh it, it makes me think so candace used to do um orange theory right or take any yeah, the, of those gym yeah yeah take take any of those things well it's like they have a good thing going on because the business model is set up where it's like group fitness right but you're like if you were an athlete, which you were, right? So you know soccer. how, you know, whenever you were training for soccer and you'll have soccer practice, right? Most of it wasn't really kicking the soccer ball around. It was like doing other type of agility, Technical and straight drills. training and all this yeah, stuff. Making sure you're and so then you go, all right, well, I'm with this group of guys and gals and we're going to go over here for night down for 15 minutes. Then we're going to go over here for 15 minutes. And we're going to go over here for 15 minutes. And at the same time, we're going to root everybody on all together because we want to be successful. Well, that's what Orange Theory is, right? So you got all these different little groups. Really, really smart, especially if you're an athlete. So if you're an athlete, you haven't been working out or you like working out, check out Orange Theory or any of that type of stuff. But on top of that, what's even better is it's expensive, <laughs> right? Oh, yeah. So they're like, all right, so we got two things going for us, beneficial. It's a group thing, all right, so they'll motivate each other. Okay, we're good there, all right. It's expensive, okay, so that hurts the pocket if you don't go, okay. And then we're going to double down on it, meaning if you actually don't show up to the class, we're going to dock you. Like, we're going to make, we're going to charge you more money. So they, it's a genius, oh, right? Dude, so you're like, great, yeah. so then you're like, man, I don't really want to go. You're like, oh, but Sally will be there. I need to go. I got to be there for Sally, right? And you're like, nah, I'm a blow off Sally. No big deal. But man, but I'm spending a hundred and ten dollars a month, man. That's oh, maybe yeah. But I mean, this, this is one. I'm just gonna skip this one, man. I better go try to be twenty two. Oh hell no, man. I gotta go, man. I gotta go, man. I gotta pack it up. Let's go. We're going to, you know. It's a like, that's, yeah, that's yeah. genius. You got three ways, yeah, you right? Got, you got to make the uh, the pain of not going equal to or greater than the pain of going, you know, right. because yeah. it does suck <laughs> going to the gym, you know? I love how your mind creates this equation. You're such a, you're like, oh, one plus, yeah, man, that makes sense. <laughs> That's just how I see it. 
But it's the same as class, you know, if you put in the time, if you go to class, you know, there, it, I, I can be in a class with someone else and, and they get something totally different out of the, the same exact experience. Right. You know, it's your mindset. It's, it's putting in that work and, put, and going through the suck to just become a little better or smarter or more fit or whatever, you know. Well, even, yeah, no, college is, college was good. I mean, you know, I look back on it and of course I'm like, man, I'm, I'm grateful I went, you know, but at the same time. You know, because now when you're on the other side, you feel like you're smarter. You know, like, oh, man, I didn't even need it. You know, so you're like, nah, I probably should have kept going. Right. I'm pretty right. sure. Yeah. Probably a good thing that I did. But you know how it works. It's like anything else. Like, you know, it's terrible that you're going through it at the time. You're like, man, this is terrible, man. I am just, I cannot believe I'm doing this. And just why am I doing this? And then you get the end, you're like, man, I probably didn't even need to go through all that. Yeah. But you're like, nah. I did, because I'm a human. But you I, know, need, getting, I need to learn that. Getting the degree, that. regardless of what the degree is, and, you know, most people don't even practice what they're in anyway, but uh, getting that it's degree true. does give you a sense of confidence. You know, there, that's it, it took a lot of small victories to get to that degree. Oh, you know, yeah, that's a good way of looking at it. 130 credit hours of victories, right? Like, uh, each class is like, what, three? That's a lot of classes. That that's a, a lot. lot of passing. That's a lot of yeah. A's that you Well, that's also a lot of time. Yeah, but each one of those A's is, you know, you're chiseling out who you're going to be. You know what I mean? Like, I, I think that life or happiness really boils down to just, like, being able to, to measure your successes, you know, no matter how small. And that's what school does, you know. By right. the end of it, why do, you, why do you feel good? You know what I mean? When right. At the end of school, when you're graduating, walking down that aisle, you know, why do people throw their hat? Because they're like, I'm done. That's right. You know I don't even I mean? wear I don't even like this hat. Yeah, really? you feel yeah. good. You know, you go into an interview like, I just survived that. You know what I mean? You need me. Right. You, you know? need so to pay me for that because I need to pay that off. Yeah, so at money. the very least, you know, college does offer you that if you have zero structure, you know. I love it. Did you have, so, um, one of the ways that I met my, my keyboard player is because uh, his ex-wife was like my go-to partner in college, right? And I had a few of those different groups, like especially there's this one statistics class. I'm friends with Bobby on here, Bobby Sanders. Uh, love you, bro. Um, Bobby actually, he, what was it, Throwback Thursday? I think he was the first one to create that hashtag, by the way. No way. Throwback th I'm telling you, what? man. Because he had a micro machine. You remember the micro machines, the yeah, little yeah, baby yeah. cars? He took a photo because he's all into cars and stuff. and So we used to hang out on Barrett. That's how we know each other. We were Barrett kids together. Oh, man. So, uh, yeah, old school, a man. I haven't told anybody about, about being a Barrett kid, man. Don't <laughs> judge me, people. Um, yeah, I'm sure they were. So they were Bobby there. took a dang photo of this micro machine because it was like the car that he was driving or whatever. And because he used to have micro machines when he was a kid, he's like, throwback Thursday. <laughs> and sure enough, there's like an article and like a, a you know, news came out. So you're the first person to use like, yeah, this is kind of weird. You know, yeah, it's pretty crazy. cool. So anyway, sidetrack. So Bobby, me and Bobby and this other dude, we were all in this statistics class, right? And it was like, a, a, not a high level. It wasn't like 3000 level or four or anything. I think it was like in the twos or something. So it was like a business. Like you, so basically with the business school at KSU, you know, Michael J. Coles, a homeboy that owns American cookie company. Right. It's his business school. Yeah, yeah. Right. And so they have this thing where it's like this business school GPA. So you have to have like a cumulative that was a hard word GPA of 3.0 in these eight classes. So basically you get a C in one of them. You're basically in the hole. Right. You can basically get one C and that's like it. Everything else has to be a couple A's and some B's. Right. Well, this class was in that. So everyone has to take it. And I ended up getting the doctor or this, I mean, they're all doctors, but this particular guy like had the, the success rate of like 2%. I mean, it was something ridiculous. And we're all in there. We're like, dude, I can't afford to drop this class because no one else, like all the other classes were full because everybody's basically on the same path. Right. Well, me and Bobby and this other dude, we're like, well, we're going to have to band together. And we were literally having these different sessions. I can't even tell you how many times I went to Einstein or Starbucks or all that stuff. And we would literally sit there and then we'd call each other. Hey, man, did you run through that, pro that, that problem 18 times? Yeah. 
all right, I'm gonna do it one more time. Let's see if we get the same thing. Like, and it's like you have PTSD together, right? <laughs> yeah, that's that's where I, yeah, you're, you're in the trenches, man. That's where bonds are formed. Right. You're like thinking about, like, man, you see your bike, like, hey, man. Yeah, yeah. final exam yeah. is life or death. We really. we best friends in our minds solely because of that class, right? That's right. I have a few of those. But... That's funny. Um, well, outside, uh, so UPS. You and how many have you and I worked at multiple places, or is it just Taco Bell? Didn't we work somewhere um, else together? No, we had the pleasure of uh, working at competitors. And, oh, uh, that's and right. Had, yes. Why, why don't you tell them this the, is a great the story. Raw and the no meat story. Oh that, that man, was great. that was good times. All right, so <laughs> I completely forgot. I knew it was something. I was oh, like, yeah. it's in the back of my head. All right, so back when people actually went to stores, right? You had your boy Circuit City, which I worked at. And then you had your boy Best Buy. He's actually still fighting and kicking somehow. Far superior. Right. I don't know how they're still in business, but they are. So that's all that really matters. So I started working at Circuit City uh, basically part-time because I was working at Panera Bread at the mall at the time. Oh, man, I forgot you did yeah, that. Yeah, dude, oh I was slinging God, sandwiches. I Bro, bread. I was, dude, the... the <laughs> The you pick two? I'm like, man, you you pick two. What you want, man? A little Bravo. I got a Bravo right here. Okay, on that tomato basil. Okay, and then what you want? A broccoli cheddar and a broccoli cheddar, right? Be slinging them, bro. Just crushing. So I did that, and then I ended up um, getting, I can't even remember how I got the opportunity. I think I just saw it online or something. Um, but basically, I was like, all right, well, Circus City pays more per hour because that was where I was at in my life. And I was like, okay. I'm going to go over here. Well, of course, they basically hang it over your head. They're like, this is just for seasonal. This is just seasonal. So these fools, because I'm in sales, right? And so I'm in the computer and laptop, right? And camcorder and digital camera, right? So we're in those. Uh, digital imaging? Yeah. that's that's dig I think digital imaging is what they called it at Best Buy. For uh, me, yeah. they were like. Cameras and camcorders, bro. Uh, I was uh, I was digital imaging, so I knew everything about every Canon and Nikon, and oh god, that was the best job ever. <laughs> and then you also bought everything because they give you a, a customer uh, discount. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, like, yeah, yeah. All your paycheck gets sunk right yeah. into everything you play with. All they even set stuff. it up as a program. They're like, no, go ahead, just draft it on. Just go ahead and draft it because then they like, don't even want to take out any money whatsoever. They're like, no, we'll just take both there. I appreciate that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We're saving payroll money, bro. Um, but basically, I went in there, and then they had me pitted up against this guy. I can't even remember his name. I think it was Chris. There's like 18 Chris's, as you know. That's how it works. But they were basically like putting us together like, hey, guys, we only got one spot full time after this. And this kid's like a college kid. He's going away anyway. But like they knew that. They're like, nope, you guys got to fight it out. You guys got to push through this this hard season. You know, and I'm like, dude, y'all are killing me. So I ended up actually getting full time. And then that's where I ended up meeting Aram. So I'm over here in the computer department, and then the install for car audio is right next to it, right? And so how I met a ROM is because everybody starts talking to me, and I'm talking about music, right? Because I was a, a drummer at the time, and um, they are like, hey, man. Crimson Flames? Right? Crimson Flames, bro, right? I remember Battle uh, of Bands. Crimson Flames, man. So that's how I actually met Mac uh, uh, through oh, Circuit right. City. Really? Yeah. Um, so a ROM comes over, and he's like, hey, man. He's like, I got this CD that I got out of a customer's car. You think you can burn it? I'm like, you dang straight, how many copies we need, bro? So I just have a computer where I just burn all these copies of CDs. And I got, I still have some that are like this band called John Desai, right? They're like from like Trinidad and Tobago. I don't even know how we get our hands on this record. But I still have it. I can't find it anywhere. It's amazing. But that's how we all became friends with the guys in Car Audio. They'd always bring me these CDs, right? And then fast forward, I find out Aram's got a brother. I don't, are they twins? They were twins, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So they got a brother, and his name is Amid, and then he's working with Fico, basically doing the same jobs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we, uh, we were mirrored. Uh, I had one twin at Best Buy, blue tucked in polos, and he had the other twin at Circuit City, and they had red, yeah. red tucked in polos. Killing and, it, man. Yeah, we, uh, we used to... <laughs> We used to go eat at Roussan. Oh, that's right. Yeah, we did. We'd like kind of meet right around the corner, and uh, it would be two red shirts, two blue shirts, and two of them were identical twins. So uh, <laughs> it was awesome. That is awesome. I wonder how they're doing. Well, the last time I, I saw, uh, yeah, I saw a Rom when I was going to the um, the LA Fitness on Way Green. 
He was going there. I don't, I don't know what he was doing at the time in terms of work, but then we always see each other. Oh, nice. yeah, no, so, I haven't seen them in uh, over a decade at this point. Yeah, I'm, I haven't seen Amid in probably the same amount yeah, of time. I, I, I worked there until uh, like the week that I turned 18, and then I hopped over to Taco Mac. Oh, man. I was counting the days because tip money was real Whew. back when you were 18. What yeah. a blessing. What a blessing Taco awesome. Mac yeah. was. Oh, man, we Plus, ran that place dude, for a while. So it was... You, me, Jeff Foster, because okay. Jeff is the one that got us all the jobs. Hey, like, Jeff, if it wasn't for Jeff, we nobody would have had a job there. So That's true. poor Jeff, though. <laughs> Jeff's like on the fast track to management. Like they love Jeff, and at the time, talking back management. I mean, we were all like nineteen, twenty years old. I mean, dude, they're like, yeah, man, we'll pay you fifty G's. So I mean, it was not some chump change, you know. I mean, you had to work all the time, and you couldn't do anything with the money, right? Because <laughs> you're always there. Yeah. You were but, a slave. But still, you made 50 grand, you know, somewhere around there. Well, poor Jeff. So Jeff's like on this fast track, and he starts vouching for all these bums like us. And so <laughs> so it you. Was, it was pretty bad. So it's me, then I got you there, and then we got uh, freaking Roberto Diaz. The Diaz so we got So we got the Diaz. Yeah. Did, did Charles work there? Charles had an remember. employee number. We never got him through the door. That's right, that's yeah, right. He changed his mind last minute. At the minute. last minute, ATS. yeah. He wanted to go work inside and buy 200-degree boilers. Yeah, because that's better. Yeah. And no women. Yeah, the money was better. Yeah, <laughs> boilers, no women. That's true, that's true. So. Yeah. And then we also, so another thing, um, did, you ended up playing soccer with us versus the Mexicanos, yeah, didn't you? Man, yeah, in front yeah. of the house versus back of the yeah, house. Yeah, I was going to say, so... On For Wednesdays... a case of beer, we used to buy a case of beer. We would show up hungover as hell. Yep. Uh, we stayed up playing poker and FIFA Street and Guitar Hero till two in the morning, right. and we would show up with a twelve pack. The winner gets the twelve pack. Everyone, I mean, people would run to the garbage to puke. Yeah. you know, in the middle of these intense, totally unorganized games, like it was awesome. Well, it was also funny because you know we just show up. The whole back of the house are nothing but Mexicanos, and then a bunch of us white dude mixed bag folks. You know, for, and so it was always front of the house versus back of the house. And we would always get just murdered because they'd always have like 15, 20 dudes, right? So, you know, soccer's 11 on 11. And so these fools are rotating dudes in and out. Well, the white guys in the mixed bag over here, we only got like nine people. And so <laughs> we're all just playing the full 90 minute, you know, going after it, except for one time. The only time we won is why I recruited these white boys from uh, my brother's clique. And they were all soccer players on the Harrison soccer team. And oh, like, there's man, like four yeah. or five of them. And sure enough, they're all fire. Like all of them are really good. And so we get them to come play and just beat the crap out of the other team. I mean, just massacre it. And so at the time they had the Domino's had the five, five, five deal. Remember? So we go get <laughs> We get a case of beer and get the, the five, five, five deal and go down to the pool and chill out. Right. We got to get it one time because <laughs> that's how many times we won. Yeah, no, they were good. They were good. They, they definitely outskilled us. They played They're soccer good. all Ra -ra the time. And Lolo. Ra Ra, Lolo, Manuel, oh, Manny. Manuel, yeah. yeah. Oh, and then, uh, he, was always, he always had a lot of swagger. What was the other one? Awesome. Carlos? Remember Carlos? Yeah. Yeah, that was a dishwasher. No, he was, no, he he was, was a good. Yeah, yeah he, I remember him making yeah. fire quesadillas. Man, man, I had a great time at Taco Mac. That's another one. You that know, was cool. I, I think I've just always loved my jobs, you know, with like, yeah, Taco Mac was fun. Oh, and Jesse. Don't forget about Jesse. Jesse, yeah. Remember Jesse? Yeah, Jesse, man. Dude, Dude. I love Jesse. Jesse, hopefully, yeah, hopefully he's on he here. He pops up on my newsfeed yeah. every once in a while. He's down in Florida. He's dodging income taxes. Yeah, I love it. Oh, he's yeah. a smart man. <laughs> but dude, one time he's like, yeah, man, I'm going to Florida. I'm like, cool. He's like, yeah, no income tax. I'm like, yeah, no, he's always he's a smart dude. Yeah, he's, he's, good. he's in like networking, you know what I mean? Yeah, he's there's, a smart guy. There's definitely a learning curve there that most people can't reach. Yeah, <laughs> no, he, I ended up working for him. Well, he got me a job at South City. I worked there for about a year. And I think that's the only job I got fired from. Because they're like, we don't like your attitude. I'm like, because y'all creating havoc up in here, you know? Oh, man. Sometimes you get but uh, it, and then Jesse hired me after that because he was basically going and putting hot spots and stuff in hotels. Oh, yeah. Right? Right? And running yeah. all the Wi Fi. And I was like, I'll come do that. And I made like 400 bucks for a one day thing. And it took his boss like eight weeks to pay me. I, I don't. I didn't know you did that. That's yeah, I did one job. I must have been out in Huntsville when you. When it was you yeah. yeah I, I was trying not to get a serving job because I was like jaded. Oh yeah. I was yeah. jaded. No, once you leave the industry, you got to stay yeah, out. Otherwise, like, otherwise you're sucked in. You, you die there. You know. But then I went right back because John Disser <laughs> called me. So you remember, you know Mandy. So Mandy was dating John. You know John. We went to uh, yeah, uh, to John Butler Trio. John Butler Trio. Yeah, and you yeah. peed on his week. Oh, was that me? I think it was, was that you. Me his week? somebody peed on his okay, week. Yeah. 
It was somebody in my crew. That's me. all I know. <laughs> somebody in my crew peed on his brand new Wii. I was. I always had doubts. Yeah. <laughs> I, was there, I, I couldn't tell you. I remember when people called me and blew me out. Bro, your boys peed on our Wii, man. I'm like, wait, wait, wait. Hold on. What, what are we talking about here? <laughs> a Nintendo Wii? They're like, yeah, man. You boy pee on a Wii. I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm just like, this doesn't make any sense. But anyway, John Disser. So John calls me out of the blue because he got a job opening Noche. And he was one of the opening managers. And he was like, dude, he's like, I need somebody that doesn't suck to come help me open this thing. And I was like, dude, I don't know, man. I'm not really trying to get into the restaurant business, man. It sucks. I, at the time I was working at uh, a T-Mobile knockoff. Like, it was like a... Oh, yeah, I remember. You were fasting, too. Or yeah, no, I was, that were, was my first yeah, bodybuilding you, you show. show. It was yeah, horrible. I came to see you once yeah. just to see what your workplace looked like. And you had a little uh, thing of, like, rice and a piece of chicken or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you remember... So, yeah, yeah so yeah, I was there. And then it's the... The terrible thing about that, so I'm dieting for this bodybuilding show, and the freaking place right next door, that basically, because, you know, I'm in a little, like, you know, a little strip mall, and the, nothing's really insulated. A five Guys is right next to the dating place, so <laughs> every day I go to work, I'm just smelling Five Guys. I'm like, dude, I'm like, you're yeah. killing me, bro. So, but it was cool because nobody ever came in there. I sold like eight phones the entire three months I worked there because no one knew about the place. Because I was like, y'all need to advertise like something, like anything. Yeah. Like, Plus, I, I think it was one of those random like we we have all phone places. Wasn't well, it? no. Or so was it was it? basically like a T-Mobile dealer. So it can't say, hey, we're a T-Mobile. It's basically like, you know, Jimmy J's. Friggin' yeah, yeah. It, it felt like mobile one those, phone factory. It felt you like know, one of those things that you see at the mall, but yeah. like you had a whole store. To That's exactly yeah. what it is. Mm, yeah, okay. because um, uh, Mike Warford. That's how I got the job. Is through him. Because he's like, "Yo, man, you go check out the one at the mall." So I was trying to work at that one because I was already up kind of in that area. He's like, "No, we're opening this new location, man." And yeah, that was, that was that. So anyway, that's where I was working. And then John Disser called me. He's like, "Man, you get to make some money." It's a new place. It's a tapas. I'm like, tapas. And I'm telling all these people, yeah, I'm going to go work at this tapas bar. They're like, tapas bar? I'm like, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah. Tapas. They're like, what the hell is that? I said, I don't know yet. <laughs> I do not know. I have not started. I have no clue what the hell a tapas is. Okay. Yeah, I don't think I knew either. Nobody knew. Yeah. It was a new, it was uh, you, the new you thing. You may be the person that explained it to me. Right. He's like, are you from Spain? No. Then you have no clue what Acting the hell like it is. Acting like you know what you're talking about. Tapas. Tapas. Hell yeah. He said tapas. Right. Spanish so, finger food. Yeah. So that was my life. And then, now we can segue into music. Woo! So, music's always fun. Otherwise, we're just going to sit there and go back and forth talking about that the whole time. Right? Um, so, tell me, whenever you, what, what was your first memory of music? Like, what was the first thing that you can remember back to where you're like, oh, man, my mom or my dad showed me this record or something like that? If I... If I think really hard, I, I want to, yeah, I don't remember much of my childhood for some reason. Uh, but I remember buying the DMX Ooh. album. I Dark, it's exactly Dark and Hell is Hot? It definitely had the parental advisory thing, yeah. and, I, and I had to pull some shenanigans to get that. Was there the one, it was red on the front? Yeah, the, yeah, the red it's, one. It's I, Dark I and Hell is Hot? Yeah. Oh, man, I was yeah. a child, dude. Had the, had the like uh, 10, uh, Rough Rider anthem yeah, on yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I know, that's I know. the one. Yeah, it's yeah. a great album. So that's like the earliest, probably. I'm sure there's something else, but just like on the spot, like, I like it. DMX, you know. After that, like the the big momentous, like the big kind of the the big. <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, the, the game changing say, yeah, album. Yeah, the, well, no, where no, you're like, where you got album, super excited though. Experience. Yeah, yeah, like uh, what what kind of made a big difference in my life or got me loving music was uh, you guys or Josh specifically in his little white S10 we drove to Clemson I think to oh, watch 311 yes Alien Ant Farm uh, yeah we were we were kids oh man yeah. that's right Alien Ant Farm was there yes oh, damn I yeah, forgot bro. about that that yeah. was crazy there was like 300 people it was at Little John Coliseum on the Clemson. Yeah, it was uh, a tiny little state. Super yeah, tiny. All of that, the, the whole experience was very, like, next level. It was very magical yeah, to me. Yeah, uh, it was fun. And then 311, you know, just kind of blows your mind. Was that your first 311 show? I think so. Okay, yeah. I think yeah. that was my... I, I want to say that maybe there was one, at, one in Atlanta before that, but uh, okay. that was the first. Because yeah. I think that was, my, that was my second. Yeah. Yeah, because, like... Same thing. Um, we went to that one in 2003. Josh actually gave me the, the um, poster there. August 22nd, 2003. Oh, no 
G Love, something corporate. Dude, that's sick. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Um, so we went to that show because that was the Evolver tour. That was when Evolver came out. And then I think they right after that was done, they announced the fall tour. And we're like, dude, we got to go to Clemson. The tickets were like 20 bucks. Yeah, it was like really Something dude, stupid. Man. And then... And then on top of that, then our third, my third show and Charles's first show was 311 Day, 2004. Oh, I didn't make it to that. Dude. Yeah, you guys, yeah, I remember hearing about it. I finagled, I don't know if I ever told you this story, but basically I was on probation, right? And it stemmed back to the Clemson thing. I was on probation because I got busted with weed. And I had this whole thing go down where I thought I failed a test, but in reality I didn't. But knowing that I thought I did... We went to that Clemson show. I was like, well, I'm going to smoke. <laughs> right? If you're so, going down. Yeah, I was like, I'm going to smoke at this show. I'm going to Clemson, bro. It's all good. Well, I get back and my probation officer was like, hey, yeah, you passed that last one. Pee in this one. I'm like, no. <laughs> right? So basically now my my, my uh, probation officer's like pissed with me, right? She's like, this fool peeing dirty. So it comes up. This 311 show is in March and it's in New Orleans. And I'm like, all right. I'm going to this show. But how? Because, like, you can't miss school while you're on probation. Otherwise, it's a probation violation. Right? They'll come pick you up, take you to juvie. Really? I swear to God. Yikes. So I'm like, okay. I'm like, how am I going How am I gonna pull this thing off? Because the show is, like, on a Thursday or something. And i got to be down in New Orleans because how you get on the floor of the venue is you got to stand in line the day before, starting at whatever time. Wow, right? That's ridiculous. And I was like, dude, we're going to get this. Right, because Josh was with me, and so we're sitting here. And I'm like, all right, I think I came up with the idea because they were playing at um, UNO, so University of New Orleans Lakefront Arena. I go, dude, you know what's that? You know what I could do to get out of school that they'll let me do? I said, college visit. Boom. So I nice. go, dude. So check this out. So I I go and I call them. I'm like, yeah, I need to come in for a college visit. You know, like when do you want to come? And I'm like, oh man, I need to come specifically on this day. And that, I, you know, I need to be done by about one. They're like, oh no, perfect. You know. So I'm like, hell yeah. So I go and pull it. I, I, you know, I sell it to my probation officer. So I get out of school, all this stuff. Me and my ex girlfriend are literally walking around the campus like, oh yeah, that's great, yeah, no, no, that's awesome, next, yeah, next, oh man, that's cool as hell, man. Oh just man, show camp, me all yeah. the buildings from right. Here. Right, I'm like, oh man, science building, wow, man, that's really cool. And then sure enough, that we hightail it, we get done with that. I get the piece of paper signed off, and then we freaking go to the parking lot, go get in line with Josh and all them. Dude, I didn't know this. That's yeah, awesome. so they're all they're standing in line, and then we get in line. We're like, oh, what up? And everybody's out there drinking beers and you know doing whatever. And we're like, oh hell yeah! And sure enough, we got the wristband and everything. Dude, Isn't that's that crazy? Awesome. Yeah, that's sick. Now, I, I've I didn't never mean heard to, that story, man. That's I didn't mean to. Awesome. I didn't mean to hijack your your uh, you know music moment there, but I was oh, just no, like, no, no. I, cheat I, up, yeah. bro. No, man, go ahead, take it, take it. Yeah, no, uh, I I've been to a three eleven day, the one uh, I think yeah. it was the one that they played for six hours out in uh, New Orleans. What year did that was that? Uh, it was, I want to say it was probably close to like six years ago, between six and seven years ago. So 2014, 2015, around there. It had been either the 14th or the 16th. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, because there's, there's actually played. the poster right there. Oh, 2016. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I see it. That's cool. Damn, that poster is awesome. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, they uh, they played. That was intense. That was a lot. Was that? That was a lot of music. That was uh, the one where like we were in the upper level and the sound was a little off. We were yeah. a little upset by it, but you could kind of go exploring. Remember That's we right. got lucky? Oh, know? dude, somebody, I want to say somebody um, was passing the actual wristbands back. That's what we did, I think. I can't remember. So, uh, some folks got lucky. I yeah, think some people I can't were able remember. To, to make it like all the way down to where someone else was. We right. we ended up just, you know. That's we, right, because we, we were stand. on that one. You know that how, was 2014. Yeah, you know, in concerts, you know how you can just kind of maneuver your way. You right. don't even have to be let in anywhere, but you can get a better view if you got a garbage right. view. Because you, yeah, know, you came, that's right, when we had that uh, hotel with the root, with the pool on the roof. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah so that was one. 2014. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah so I sat with you guys. So 2016 think, uh, was what uh, I was thinking about. I think Henry came. Dude. Henry came. Yeah, Henry was there. Yeah, because he brought Monkey Knot. Yeah, Remember? Yeah, he was yeah, like, yeah. surprise! I was like, I yeah. think I love yeah, you, bro. Yeah, he was there. That was awesome. Um, God, that was freaking awesome. That was a great show. So that was when, um, what was that record? I think that was Stereolithic? It was, yeah, I think it was Stereolithic. Was when that Sounds album. right. I feel like the, the timing lines up with that. Yeah, because we were like, yeah, 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 yeah we're going nuts. That's yeah. crazy. 
Um, what? Who's the band that you've seen the most? Well, three of them. Three of them. Point, yeah. How many have you seen? Oh man. Uh, well, you've been on two. How many cruises have you been on? Uh, two. Two. Yeah, I went to the Belize one. That's and then right. The Jamaica. The okay. Jamaica is actually where I met April. That's right. My beautiful yeah. April. Jamaica. Oh man, <laughs> dude. So, all right. So we were all together, right? And remember how? So we went to the little bamboo beach on that one, right? Oh, yeah. The Ochos Rios. Yeah. yeah. So we're all, and so I sat here and I was like, all right, you know, normally my skin is a good complexion where I normally don't, you know, I tan really well. Yeah, you do. And so I have no clue. I put on all the stuff, everything, like everything was good. We're good. I was reapplying and everything. I don't know what the deal was. I think it was because over there by the other side of the beach, you know, had they had that little cliff there, Mm -hmm. all the, everything on the bottom, I don't know what it was like the type of uh, rock, but it was like translucent. And the bottom of the ocean was that rock at that point, right? It was like really smooth. So I don't know if the water, because it was crystal clear and then bouncing off that rock or something. All I know is, bro, I could barely walk. I was so burnt by the time I got back to the boat, right? And so that was the sound system show when we were leaving. Remember how they played yeah, sound they system? Yeah, they played the sail away, yeah. So I had this shirt on, right? And I mean, I'm like super sunburnt, like, the worst sunburn I've ever had. Chris, right? And so I'm wearing this shirt, and people, you know how we all are at Three Lives, like, oh, man, oh, oh dude. Yeah, so I'm sitting here, and people are like, oh, my gosh, that lesser, and I'm like, dude, I'm like, no. I'm like, you got to get I'm, off my of back, bro. Sure I, I distinctly remember a few times where you blew up on people. For I think it was Justin Fields. I'm like, yeah. touch me again, and you're dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember you had that uh, that weird ankle thing that happened to you too. Remember that, dude? You got that was like that was like ooh, man, that man. Was painful. I don't even know what happened. I didn't I twist know. my ankle or anything. It probably has something to do with the fact that you're eight foot tall. <laughs> <laughs> I have no clue. My ankle was like, and I was like, dude, what is going on, man? I had to wear an ankle bracelet Swole, yeah, for like two weeks. It swelled up like crazy. Yeah, I was, I was like, like dude, that, that was awesome, man. I that was like my first cruise after divorce. And I just threw down, dude. I, you know, I had no care in the world. Dude, you were, yeah, you were care. like a, you were like a, a traveling bum. That whole thing, meaning, you everywhere I saw, I'm like, oh, there goes Pico. You're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, see you, man. But you know that you cruise, know, that cruise great. actually helped me in my sobriety because I'm like, oh yeah, you know, it's like I've pretty much got it out of my system on that cruise. Yeah, 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 you know what like, I mean? I'm I'm a, I did it all, oh, dude. There was nothing I was saying. Yeah, you're like, I'm gonna put a hole in this. Oh man, that's what you go on cruises for. You know what I mean? Like I needed that. I needed that that just release and just not worrying about reality and just well, dude. music and friends and family and a 311 cruise for for everyone out there who hasn't been on one. You don't have to know anyone on that cruise. Yeah, no, you can go you, by yourself. You'll get hugged a hundred times. You'll meet everyone that is, I mean, God, they love music. They love each other. It's all about unity. It's, uh, you should try it. No, if, that was, if, uh, if the cruise industry ever bounces back. No, it, it, it will eventually, hopefully. Um, but that's where I met the Murphys, was that, uh-huh. that show, or that cruise. And then that was also where pretty much all you guys got introduced to Dirty Heads, was yeah, also that cruise like definitely. Justin One of the and all best them things about that cruise man they were like dirty this, who are this but i'm like let's go i mean like finding crazy. 311 all over again you know you can go back and dig through albums that were 10 years old that was fun that was a good experience just the dirty heads alone mm. you know what i mean and then pepper was on the boat that's right yeah. oh man because we got to hug on them brett bollinger and then um Didn't we, kaleo we those guys were like super nice chess like that giant chess on this and, and one of them someone came by that we were like what the hell the, the cruise is Dude. unbelievable yeah, that was crazy. So that guy, so yeah, when you and I were up there, we were playing chess, like the life-size chess. And so we met the tour manager of Dirty Heads. And then I met this guy, Shannon, who uh, Vince knows Shannon, too. He met him and other stuff. But Shannon is like the guitar tech. He came up with like Marilyn Manson and all these other dudes. And he had just gotten a gig working with Dirty Heads. And so I met Shannon. I actually follow him on uh, Instagram oh, now. Nice. And so he likes my stuff from time to time, which I always was like, man, that's cool, man. He knows people. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, cool. that's awesome. That's awesome. But, um, well, let's get into the musings part, yeah, man. shall we? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, what do you have in mind? so the musings part is always because you know, obviously talking about positivity and and love and life and all that stuff. Um, your boy Jerry Garcia, and I'm gonna you know paraphrase this quote. But basically, somebody was asking him a question, you know, he's like, um, I think maybe about the devil or, or about death or something. 
Um, but basically he was saying, you know, without the dark, you wouldn't really know about the light, right? And it's kind of the same thing with negativity. Like you wouldn't really know um, something was negative without really knowing the positive and vice versa, right? And so part of this podcast, because everybody likes to talk about, you know, what happens when you fail? What happens when you fall on your face? You know, one of the things that I always like to talk about, because it happens to everybody, right? Nobody got to where they are in life without falling on their face five, six times, right? If not even more, right? Depending on how you look at falling right, on yeah, your no, face. It's, right? almost, uh, it's part of being human. Right. And so, you know, when I was talking with Richie, which we, Richie, we love you very much. Senor um, Torrens. You know, one of the biggest things that we talked about is, you know, when things aren't going right, what do you do, right? Where do you pull out the strength to really not only, especially because you have a family, right? So you, you're not just trying to be strong for yourself. you got to be strong for yeah, other people. Yeah. No, i got three you little know? ones. So, like, what, what are some of the things that go through your mind or what, what's your go-to? or what? Tell me anything that's really inspired you when things are going rough to, to get you back on track. I can tell you... The main thing that I use, and this is, um, this may not come as a surprise to many of you, but uh, just breathing exercises, uh, meditation, and trying to realign your, uh, if you think about your situation long enough, you could almost think it away. I know that sounds silly. Uh, you can't get caught up in your thoughts that just randomly come at you, but intentional thinking about your situation, intentional thinking about how you should be grateful that, you know what I mean? It doesn't matter what it is. You know, I can tell you with with full honesty, my criminal record and, and the troubles that came with with drinking, you know, just drinking and driving a few DUIs, I'm grateful for them. You know, those were the things that kind of molded me. And I, I try to think anytime that I encounter a hard situation right now, anytime I uh, I hit something that I know is uh, it's going to be difficult. I, I just remember that, like, in the middle of all that, Years later, I can look back and be grateful for that situation. So what can I pull out of this now? You know, what can I pull out of the pain or the struggle or, or you know, even just, like, we can take it as far as depression, right? Depression is part of life. You know, a lot of people try to fight it. A lot of people try to take pills to make it go away. And sometimes the best thing to do is feel it, you know, mm-hmm. give into it. Why? Why am I sad right now? What's going on here, right? That's almost like an indicator, right? Like a little flag coming up saying something's off. You know, something about who you're trying to be right now isn't correct. You know, like you're doing something wrong. Pay attention and you'll find it. You know, a lot of people don't pay attention. So they spiral down that same little, you know, and it can, you know, that leads to drug use, leads to drinking, leads to more doubts, leads to more depression. And you never try to find a, a solution, you know? It's almost like people just forget about solving the problem and just get used to having the problem. And that was a good point. Do you think, uh, in your experience, you know, the more that you would drink and things like that, do you feel like it added, like, layers that you then had to go through once you did find sobriety? Or was it just, like, just, you know, it was already it stacked up. It was already there, the drinking created to other problems and things like that but emotionally do you think that it just like made it where you had to kind of like a drill you had to drill a little bit deeper drill a little bit deeper or do you think it was just kind of like a, a, no, a yeah, foggy no, it, haze in the way it, it builds up you know uh over the years in my life and my family and uh, if you're all listening i love you <laughs> but uh you know they're listening we, i'm friends with all of them on facebook we do not talk about our emotions you know um you don't we we weren't taught those tools at a young age you know what i mean so when when you're sitting there having fun at 18 you know drinking uh, you know whether it's high school parties college parties and then you get to the work life you got a new uh, person that comes to work let's go out and get a drink you celebrate with beer you know it's alcohol can can kind of consume your life without even knowing it, right? Like, I challenge everyone to go one day without seeing one Bud Light sign or or a Bacardi sign, you know? Go fill up your gas and you get bombarded by them, right? Right. Um, So a lot of that was just... You know, it was was one of those things where you have to kind of step back and just see what's going on, you know? Uh, And and in this situation, it it was one of those... Tell me back in. What was the question again? 
So the question was, whenever you were drinking, do you think that the more you drank was adding more that's and more right, layers that right. you had to drill through? Or was it just like one big foggy yeah, haze? Right. I was trying to give some back in the It's all right. I, I like got it. lost in it. But, um, Thank God I remembered yeah. the question. Yeah, you know no, what I'm saying? Absolutely. Right. <laughs> I was getting lost. I was like, okay, who's okay, running this I'm following this. Back there. Yeah. <laughs> They're not doing a good job. You're fired, Jimmy. It's really Hulk Hogan on the on the wall over there. You see him? <laughs> Who put the question mark in the teleprompter? Yeah. So. Uh, no, anyway, yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I didn't know... I didn't have tools for dealing with a lot of stuff and it just stacked up. And in my 20s, things got real. Life got heavy. I lost some people. I was in a, a hard marriage. Uh, I just lost my dad. I lost my best friend. A lot of pain happened. And, you know, you, when you don't know how to deal with it, you just kind of do what you know, which for me was drinking. That was my, my medication. That was, you know what I mean? My escape away from it. Whether it was drinking with friends, whether it was, you know, you just a rough day, whatever it was, you know? Uh, so I didn't, it just more and more piled up. And then of course, if you get in trouble, DUI, that's just even more. And when I started counseling, I can tell you that I probably went through about two months of emotional growth in like a week, wow. you know, all that just talking, you know what I mean? Just being able to kind of burst a bubble of things that you've wanted to say since you were a teenager. You know what I mean? Dang, like, yeah, uh, heavy, bro. And, and everything, all the words that were coming out of my mouth, like it's almost like I was just waiting for that moment. You right. know what I mean? There was a lot of tears. There was a lot of, uh, and it was a process. It started like, oh, okay. All right. If I have this kind of outburst, you know what I mean? If I can actually express my emotions the way that they're deserve, they deserve to be expressed, then I feel relief afterwards, you know? So that was kind of uh, the first step for me. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yeah, but there's definitely, it was a lot, you know, it was stuff from childhood. It was all the grief. It was all the hard relationships. It did just stack up, you know, it did. Right. And that's. You kind of like put a callus on, on all that stuff. And then you had to go through the callus and the hardening of all that. Yeah. yeah. And you see a lot of adults and this is, if you pay, if you pay close attention, just like if you're a drinker and then you're not, you know, you're not a drinker, you could look towards the drinkers and you notice things that you didn't notice when you were on the inside. Oh, dude, for like sure. You notice the habits and, and, and the actual addiction that's happening that's played off as, like, cultural norms. Right. But it's like, you know, and we don't have to get into that since there's uh, probably I, not many sober people out there uh, right now, you know, listening. It, but, uh, you never know. but it's true, you know, it's yeah. true. It, it, and it's, it's the same when, uh, when you learn how to, and I'm not by any means an expert, you know. But when you learn that about yourself, right, there's people who are probably 60 years old right now. They're so wound up that have never had the ability to express those emotions, right. you know? Oh, I guarantee and, you. Yeah, so when, yeah. when you see someone and that you don't understand, remember, maybe they didn't, you know, maybe there's something going on there that you have no idea about, you know? It's, and it's one of those things where maybe maybe they haven't been led, you know? It, use that as an opportunity to show yourself how lucky you are, you know? Right. Dude, I, I was in my 30s or 20s when I sobered up, you know what I mean? I, I go to counseling every week, every week. Right. Yeah. It's like going to the gym, bro. You Man, just got to like keep it, keep take, that muscle like popping, bro. Yeah. There was one thing that you said to me. Um, it was after you realized you had a problem. And you you might have been sober. I can't remember when you told me. But one thing that you told me is you're like, you know, you can just be a normal person that's just drinking, right? Like just everybody else because it is very cultural. I mean, you got a baby coming. Have a drink. You got a Celebrate. new job? Well, let's get a drink, Celebrate. right? You, you lost like, your job? Right, let's get a drink, man. You know, I mean, it's it's literally everything. You're like, man, we should, that was a rough blow. We should go get a drink, right? Everything is around the getting a drink. I mean, there's no doubt. Um, but you said something to me that was pretty profound that I'll never forget, which was, you know, you can have somebody that's just normally drinking and everything is fine. And then you have some crises that happen in your life. And they, it just, it just, the, the, the floor falls out from under you. Yeah. You know yeah, what I'm absolutely. saying? And I always remember that. I was like, man, that was profound. Cause it can happen to anybody. Yeah. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Absolutely. Cause you and I did the same thing. Drinking was a normal thing. Right. And even my favorite part, check this out. This is how good I was getting at it. It's craft beer. Oh man, it's a hobby. Oh yeah, it's a hobby, Are dog. I got. I went to eight breweries in two oh, days. It's man. a hobby. Yeah, you buy it's into a the hobby. culture. Yeah. you know, as <laughs> as kind of an excuse, right? Yeah. Like it's, it's good. Uh, it's interesting. They you know, tee I, it up I for worked, you. I worked. 
and straight to ale brewing company. You know what I mean? Like I knew, I knew from a young age that hey, maybe I'm an alcoholic. Yeah, right. right? Like, I love this and job. And I dove in head first. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I dove in head first. I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. I loved the scene and. Um, and it's no surprise that I'm sober now. Just let's put it that way. You know, and, and it's, I hope that anyone who is struggling or anyone who, uh, who, who needs to hear this, you know, like, hey, it's kind of, it's kind of good on this side of the fence. <laughs> no, um, how, how long have you been sober now? Uh, a little bit over 50 months. So on the 27th of last month, it was 50. That's crazy. Hell yeah. So, yeah, that's that's a lot. So a little that's over intense. four years. Yeah, a little. Yeah. Damn, that's crazy. Yeah, it's nuts. Um, so I, you know, I celebrated a year. Oh, in, congratulations! Uh, what's Dude, today? The, the, January third. That's right. Year, yep. right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I remember. That's so, awesome. um, so you know, and you know, I didn't. I call myself a habitual drinker, right? And you, you know how it is. You can look at whoever's breaking down what. Well, that guy, he looked at alcohol in a certain way. He's an alcoholic, right? I think the yeah. most famous one is if you're drinking alone, you're an alcoholic, right? However you want to describe it. Um, you know, I kind of just got sick. Luckily for me, I didn't have any crazy things that happened. Like I didn't get a DUI or get in any trouble or punch a friend or yeah, anything you, you like were, that. You were the rare case. You, know, yeah, I, you, you just stopped. Yeah. I, just got, I just got sick of feeling pickled. You know what I'm saying? Like oh, because uh, and I still have a, an oral fixation. I just drink deep bubbly right here, man. Oh, man. I drink like 18 yeah, of these things, things a day, bro. It's ridiculous. That's, now I'm on yeah, Topo I think, Chico. I think we need to go see someone for this. Yeah. On uh, New Year's uh, morning this year, I woke up and said, Candace, I drink way too many Topo Chicos. <laughs> I bought 12, and I was going to only drink eight, right, because I wanted to save some more for the next day. I drink 10. Those things are making a comeback. I've seen them everywhere. They're delicious. Oh, but they're everywhere. But, um, but with that being said, you know, I still can relate, you know, even if, uh, you know, luckily I didn't have to go through the other hardships, you know, but like this whole last year has been an interesting, it was a very interesting year to decide to quit drinking. Let me tell you that. Definitely. definitely. <laughs> but hey, can we talk about what would happen if you didn't, right? Oh, uh, well, There's who a knows? lot of free time, a lot yeah. of chilling at home, a lot of no, re you probably would have drank your ass up. Think dude, about the money you saved. All, dude, I saved Just a the money, right? ton of like, money. Not to mention your liver. <laughs> right, yeah. My liver's like, man, we best friends again, man. But, um, but it was an interesting year because, like, back to your point about the emotion thing. Because, like, I don't, you know, people always, especially when I first quit drinking, people are like, you quit drinking? Because I'm not like, hey, yeah, I quit drinking. You know, it's basically just, you know, if you came out of the house, like, hey, you're not drinking? No. Um, but because I never wanted to really seem to be that preachy guy. Right? Yeah, so it's, I got probably, a, it's probably got a big good. Yeah, they, you get a lot of attention for not drinking. It's kind yeah. of annoying. Yeah. Uh, so, but what was crazy is I had to watch this guy on YouTube uh, and a couple of other people because I was having a struggle not understanding the psychology that came with not drinking, not that I wanted to drink, but the other people around me, because all my friends drink too, right? Which is not a bad thing, but like, it's really weird where say that there is somebody that you're hanging out with that is struggling, right? I didn't realize this because until I experienced, it, I was like a couple of people that go around, they're like kind of acting like, you know, defensive around me. I'm like, that's really weird. Oh, yeah, I'm like, why yeah, the sure. hell do they care, right? And then I found out that with somebody struggling with anything and you're doing whatever the opposite of like, what they actually want to do, right? You're like a mirror yeah. to them. Yeah, meaning absolutely. they're seeing themselves and all the stuff that they don't want to see in themselves by looking at you. And, you're, and like it's like this psychology thing. And I so I had to watch the videos because I'm like, dude, I got a couple of friends that are like, you know, it wasn't like they were, um, you know, going crazy or anything, but you just notice the differences. Yeah, there's little signs, little little red flags right. that, that I think are the same for most people. Yeah. It's really weird. So I experienced that, and then, um, but the best thing that I experienced, Bo, is definitely the clarity and, like, my emotional outbursts and stuff like that. I don't have them anymore, mm -hmm. right? Because I'm I'm feeling the pain. I'm feeling... The anxiety I'm feeling. Right, you're almost dealing with it as it comes. You right. Know? Yeah, that's. I'm not. I'm that's, not. That's, that's isn't that crazy? Man. It's 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 weird that we don't just naturally do that. That we have to be taught, or you know what I mean, learn it through some some form of 
you know, some experience, you know, right. like that's. Well, it's really weird because like if people, you know, had asked me before, yeah, I'm a crazy person. You know that. So there were nights where I would have to, you know, I'd go off, you know, not being rude or anything, but like basically I tell people what they don't want to hear a lot of the times. Right. But when I was drinking, I would do it in ways that really didn't land nicely. Yeah, you know, it was more and so people are like, that guy's an asshole. Right, right. And then I have to text people, hey, man, so I was kind of an asshole last night. You right. know, I haven't had to do that in over a year, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, except for really one time with Vivi. But I was just giving her tough love. And, and <laughs> you know, that was a little bit different. Yeah, love tough, you, tough, tough love you, Vivi. Um, but it's like small things like that, like you didn't notice. And then like with me and Candace, it's funny because I'm like, I didn't think that we really fought or had a lot of arguments before. But even after I quit drinking, it was almost non-existent yeah i mean you have disagreements and stuff that's called being a human but like just normal stuff i'm like man i haven't got in any type of argument or really anything in yeah, a long time it, it it's almost, really weird it almost gets a little predictable and boring and and you with the clarity you learn to love that right, right. there's it's like uh, your new drug it's it gives you control back Right. It's kind of strange. We, we sacrifice that control when, when you don't know what to feel, when you don't know what to say or how to feel, you drink it away, right? It's a, you're not doing anything with it. Well, it's easy. You're like, I'm just going to go put put this to bed, yeah. you know? Yeah, but uh, that uh, the clarity and, and being sober and actually facing the pain, you know, because you have no other choice. Right. Uh, yeah. It's yeah, kind of yeah. nice, though. Yeah, it is. It it's is. really weird. It's like a sadistic. You like it? I almost, you're like, I, almost, I love this pain. Yeah, I almost don't want to. All right, weirdo. <laughs> I, I don't want to tell people, like, go out and stop drinking, but I almost want to be like, you should try it for a little bit. Yeah. Because, you know, especially if you're one of those people that drinks every day, like, which, hey, dude, that's like everyone. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, like, in for society real. nowadays, yeah, they're like, man, it's okay. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's commonplace. But yeah. um, if you're one of those people, I mean, just like a 90-day break and then get a taste of what it's like, you know what I mean? Like, cause that clarity is incredible. And, and the fact that you just, you can do it. It gives you pride. You know what I mean? Right. I, I didn't think I could, there was a moment there where I didn't think I could make it to 90 days, you know? So 50 right. months is like, what? It almost sounds made up. How many, how many yeah, months have lot. you been sober? 50 months. You know, it's yeah. like some, some shit a kid would say, right? Like, yeah, I like it though. Yeah. Well, um, one thing that, um, oh man, I, I, I literally had it on the tip of my tongue and I forgot what it was. But, uh, oh, that's what it was. Okay, so so John Mayer, right? Everybody knows I love my boy John Mayer, right? Yeah, he's not, awesome. not a surprise. And then the fact he's playing with Dead & Company. Mm. Now my deadhead freaking life is just... I'm that Born and raised. Whew, is just dude, unreal. unreal. I'm just... I can't stop, man. It's like crack cocaine. Oh, it's so good. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So, um, but I didn't realize that John... I think he's on his going on his third year of sobriety. Oh, damn. I didn't know that. I either. didn't either. So... I found out because I think he went on like Ellen or something and they, you know, he didn't go, Hey, I'm, not, I'm sober, blah, blah, blah. But like they were talking about drinking or something. He's like, Oh, actually I don't drink anymore. You know? And she's like, Oh, and then everybody of course clapped, you know? Um, but he was the same way. He didn't have a problem, meaning he didn't, nothing really happened. He just got sick of drinking. Right. When I found that I was like, Oh, that's cool. Well then, um, he did this little show. It was on, um, like Instagram, you know how Instagram, live and instagram tv they started that kind of whole thing yeah they do the little interview slash tv session yeah so he's like all right i'm gonna start my own little show well at the end of one i think it was i can't remember what it was but it was sometime recent about a year ago or so and i thought it was really cool because he was like you know happy new year's to everybody he's like if you do have a new year's resolution and it just so happens to involve not drinking anymore he's like good he's like try it out he's like it's not for everybody but try it out and then when you see that if things are going good, try it out a little bit longer, right? He's like, heck, even never go back to it, right? If it makes you feel good. He's like, but try it out a little bit. And I was like, that was the first time I heard him kind of be preachy about it. And I thought it was really cool because that always kind of fired me up because I was like, man, it is cool. Because, I mean, I still smell my friend's beer. So I'm like, man, they smell that beer, oh, bro. Oh, me too. But at the wine, time, yeah. Wine stinks yeah. when you're sober. You're Dude, like, it's terrible. It smells like a dirty rag. Plus you also. Know, like stinky grape juice. <laughs> Dude. That, that's so funny. So, like, I always thought it was weird how cops would come up to vehicles. Like, you know, if people get DUIs, like, I smell alcohol. And if you're drinking, you're like, there's no way in hell this guy smells this. Stuff. There's no way in hell. And then you quit drinking. You're like, dude, I can smell alcohol in that, dude. You stanky, man. Oh, yeah. yeah. Just... I know every time April has a drink, dude, every <laughs> single like, Bro, time. you stink. I'm like, rum? 
Yeah, you're like, go take a bath and Ooh, brush your teeth. Brush, you know, you know what? Clean the whole works. body. You know what sucks to do? Go smell some tequila. Even oh. though it's sober, you're just like, what the? It's no. like something you put in a gas tank. You know? I'm sure it's it is. Like, I can't believe we used to drink that. No, somebody came and they, uh, I can't remember who, it might have been my buddy Joe, but somebody came over recently and they brought over a Tropicalia and they cracked it open and I was like, ooh, and so I grabbed it and you know how people, we're all friends, we all drink yeah, each other's yeah. stuff. Well, I grabbed it and he's thinking, he's like sitting right, you know, and I'm like, hmm. <laughs> He's like, oh, dude, I thought you were about to drink that thing. I was like, bro, no, man, I'm almost to a year, bro. I ain't going to yeah. blow it down. Oh, yeah. I'm like, I, I, I got to get it, man. Mm, I get it. You know, I smell every hoppy beer that, uh, that I, you know, that Trish drinks. And they're all, yeah. dude, that floral aroma. You got to smell mm, them. It's that, like smelling a plant. You're like, ooh, that's a good plant. Look, look, look how crazy this is, right? Like, we were into, me and Brent were avid IPA lovers. I mean, the hoppier, the better, mm. you know. Double big, IPAs, big hoppy monster? Oh, mm. dude, uh, snake hand. By, uh, oh, uh, yeah, what was that? Good people? Was, yeah, yeah, was good that people. good people? That was like yeah. out in Birmingham somewhere, yeah. Yeah. Birmingham, but uh, anyway, the hoppier the better, you know? And um, the way that they used to rank the um, the hoppiness in a beer was IBUs, which is International Bitter Units. So this beer just tastes like shit. Yeah, <laughs> literally like... I mean, why did I? Yeah. Why did I just go outside and eat a plant? Yeah, and the better ones taste even more like earwax, right? Like, it just... But we loved them. You but know what I mean? Like but you're a connoisseur at that point. Yeah, and it, and it reminds me, like, in AA, anyone who's been to AA knows that uh, in the preamble, it calls alcohol, um, it describes it as cunning, right? Mm. And uh, I think that that's super important for people to keep on the front of their mind because at all times, you think you're in control, but you're really not. No. You know what I mean? If you sit down and write down, just put a little scratch mark for every beer you drink, right? Just check that out at the end of the week, right? Like, are you really in control? Did you mean to drink 35 beers this week? <laughs> you know, it's, it's well, just... So, it's funny. So, you mentioned AA. So, I, uh, my boy Nick let me borrow this uh, biography about Stevie Ray Bond, right? And so, you know, I'm a big SRV guy. That's basically why I even played. Yeah, that's, that's how I started playing guitar, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And then I found my boy John Mayer, and his dude is SRV, and then me and John Mayer are like best friends in my mind, right? <laughs> nice. So, but then I realized, I was like, dude, I haven't read in uh, a Stevie Ray Vaughan book. You know, I have of all of his records. You know, I, uh, I've i seen all the DVDs. You know, I've done, I know all the stuff. I know all the music, everything, right? My dad introduced me when I was in... Uh, Fifth grade, right? I remember like it was yeah. yesterday. I think you introduced me to him. So. It had, yeah, I mean, dad Dad was so obsessed. It was funny because my dad introduced me to a ton of music. My mom and my dad, that's how I just got immersed in like the Almer brother. I remember going to my... Yeah, your my, dad was uh, a big uh, jam band. Dude. Yeah, he, he was always... Well, he loved... Yeah, he loved... Uh, you know, I mean, Almer Bros is the Almer first Brothers, jam yeah. is the yeah. first jam band really besides the dead, but they both kind of came up around the same time. And dad wasn't really a deadhead, but he was big into the Almer Brothers, like huge and so i would listen to them and then i'm telling you man my dad was like me with uh with music he found stevie ray vaughn and this dude about lost his damn mind he's like brick come in here man listen to this freaking thing i'm like dude okay man what the hell's wrong with you dude he's like man listen to this right here and he put a cold shot my dad loved that song cold shot he's like man listen to this song man and so he showed me that. And then dad got so obsessed. Dad didn't even play guitar. Dad went and bought some random knockoff guitar and then some little baby amp, or I think it was like a Fender tube amp, right? He bought that, and then he's like, man, this guitar sucks. And then he found out that Stevie Ray Vaughan, Fender put out a Stevie Ray Vaughan model. And at the time, this guitar was like $900, which back then was pretty dang expensive. Now that guitar goes for like two grand, right? right? Yeah, like Show you a little inflation there. Yeah, yeah. Um... But dad went and got this guitar, and man, it was beautiful. And it was like impossible for me not to go in there and then start playing that thing. But I mean, I was like, dude, this is incredible. That's how, yeah, I forgot you, uh, you started the guitar. Yeah, isn't that really weird? I, I, was, played, I, I was, played guitar for like yeah, a year. You, you were a drummer at a really young age. Yeah. I mean, that, it was like 17, 18. You were drumming like in a band and all Yeah, that I started stuff. playing drums at 14. But so oh, I, played, sure. I played guitar yeah. at 10. And then I played, because um, I wanted to play drums the whole time. Right. So I go into to play drums at in middle school, but everybody and their mom wanted to play drums in the band, right? And I was like, well, I'm not playing tuba, because that's what they wanted me to play. They were like, well, we got, you would have been a killer tuba Dude, player. probably. I'd probably be the best tuba player you know. Make it look like <laughs> a trumpet. <laughs> um, seven feet. So I go, and I instead I... I joined the orchestra because they had the double bass. So I played bass for three years. And then when I found, when we were all playing... Uh, paintball 
Remember how we went through that whole phase? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we I had, had that blades. Well, and that talons. and then yeah, they just kept building up. And the spiders, remember? Oh, yeah, the everybody spiders had a spider for a little while. That was fancy. Uh, well, I finally bought an autococker, right, which is like a six hundred, seven hundred dollar gun. And then when we all got out of that phase, everybody but Charles, because you know Charles is like the master of yeah, any any phase, hobby. Like late twenties. He's yeah. like, I got ninety seven hobbies, bro. Still in them, man. <laughs> yeah. Well, I sold that autococker, and then I finally bought my first drum set, which, you know, my parents were like, oh, okay, and then they were pissed because I played that shit all the time. That's how that whole deal went. But the whole reason why I was telling you this SRV thing is because obviously he was drinking and boozing and doing all kinds of stuff. And uh, and then he found AA mainly through um, Eric Clapton kind of helped him out because Eric Clapton went through all this crazy stuff. And it just so happened that Stevie basically collapsed on stage. Like his body finally gave out on him because what he was doing was he was drinking Crown Royal, which is his favorite, and he would make a Crown Royal shot in the morning, and he put cocaine in it, and oh he and then he'd drink it. Right, like that was his thing. Red Bull. That was that was how he would get up in the morning because he'd be, you know, doing it in the face and all that stuff uh, during the night. And uh, apparently, cocaine crystallizes when you when it when you put it in liquid and when it hits your belly, and so it was like cutting his stomach, Ooh, right? Man. And so he's basically like dying. And he, like, collapses as he's going off the stage and, like, basically muscled through this performance in, in England. And um, basically his buddy was like, dude, what was that place that Eric Clapton went to? We got to get Stevie in it. So they find out it's in London, and they take Stevie and admit him. Eric Clapton gets wind of it. And Eric Clapton's, like, four years sober at this point. And he was on heroin and, and drinking. Like, Eric yeah, Clapton hard stuff, did play, bro, right? <laughs> So I found this out in this book, and I was like, man, that makes me love Eric Clapton so much more. So Eric goes down while Stevie's there because he went to the same facility, right? He visited him, gave him some words of encouragement, even wrote down little maps of places that he can go and walk and, like, Dude, go and clear huge. his mind and stuff. And uh, then he also bought all of these flowers, like, basically bought enough flowers to fill the room so Stevie could see brightness and colors yeah, and all that. I was like, sense. Dude. Yeah. How nice is that? But um, Stevie with... Like a little sober partner. Dude, amazing. So Stevie, then uh, he came... He actually came to a rehab facility in Marietta after that. Um, a hardcore one where they're like, no, nah, bro, you ain't going on no walks. No, right? yeah, you hanging yeah. out inside this place. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's, um, there's some that... Uh, but, you know, it's because they need to be, right? Yeah, like, for sure. Yeah. But that's how he learned about AA, right? And then same thing that we're basically doing where we're like, we're trying not to preach here. But basically he started going and... Uh, one of the rules of AA, basically they say, you know, you can talk about the 12 steps, but don't be like, yo, man, Alcoholics Anonymous, because technically in their mind at the time, the uh, anonymity of it, you're supposed to be anonymous, right? right? Yeah. And so they didn't really want somebody going out, hey, going, hey, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I thought it was interesting, So, but he kept like, because he, he got so passionate about it, like you do, like you get passionate about helping other people. He was so freaking passionate about it where he's like he does this song um i can't remember the name of it right now but anytime he plays it he has this little portion in the middle where the drummer just you know really slow and then stevie starts talking and so every time before he passed away he would sit there and just tell me you all you gotta love each other man y'all can't be doing no drugs man that stuff to kill you like so yeah, he just yeah, go yeah, through yeah, all this awesome, stuff man. i just yeah. thought it was so cool and then the, his bassist tommy shannon they were like best buddies, like you and I, right? Where we're, all, dude, we're going out drinking. Brent and Figo okay. going to be there. We're going to be there together, side by side. We even going to take the same pee breaks, right? So Tommy Shannon. Bring, bring a case yeah, for backup. Yeah, just, just in the car, man. We're not driving nowhere. We're just using the car to hold the beer. Yeah, no, no big deal. We're, we're going to take a break from this beer over here at the bar to go chug a beer at the car, and then we'll be right back. Yeah, yeah, we're just trying to be economical. Catch our buzz before we get to the real fun. Not a, not a big deal. But uh, Tommy Shannon was the bass player, and that was, like, his best buddy. And so when Stevie went to rehab, Tommy went back home to Texas, and then he entered rehab, too. So with all of that being said, they ended up doing AA meetings together and on the road and stuff. Jeez, that's when huge. they got you back out. Those, dude, dude oh I was like, God. that's incredible. So Yeah, that's wild. 
That's wild. Man, I, I've had great uh, great experiences at AEA meetings with like just a random story that I can relate to. I could imagine that that probably would change so many lives, you know what I mean? Oh, Seeing dude. a hero or someone that's just a god on an instrument like mm -hmm. that kind of preaching to you about, about sobriety is probably huge. No, I mean, I couldn't imagine, but who knows how many people, yeah. you know. Yeah, no. but, and that's the other thing, too, is, uh, you know, who knows? People, especially during this whole pandemic thing, um, who knows how many people have just needed some words of encouragement, you know what I'm saying, besides... Yeah, yeah, you know, um, I heard that uh, that drug use and, and everything went up uh, a lot through this, which, which makes sense, you know what I mean? Like, it, 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 would, it would be see, weird if it didn't. Yeah, you could almost see you know the stress saying? flowing out of these media devices, you know what I mean, and just infecting everyone, you know. it's It's been like a heightened... 2020 you know and now we're in 2021 and i could almost feel it you know even with the capital stuff like i was just like oh they're just a few days that belongs last year you know what yeah, i mean i was like, like this, this, is, this is last year's yeah, hangover they're just late you know yeah. like but but, uh, yeah. but I, I hope um you know the whole point of this podcast is is basically just bringing my friends on and, and, and yeah, talk to them and because yeah, half what? of our most of our friends are, are, are all the same people so it kind of works out but i also just love the fact that um which is a blessing for me, I, I don't realize until I came up with the idea to do this, I didn't realize how many of my friends and family are small business owners or, you know, helping somebody else in their business achieve their their business dreams and then how how important music is to all of us, right? Yeah. And then yeah, you no. take that and now then you talk about the struggles because everybody has them. And, uh, and I appreciate you sharing yours. Yeah, no, of course. Uh, it's, of it's, course. Been, it's been good. We went a little bit over, but yeah, we, no, we, already, no. we already knew that was going to happen anyway. Um, Definitely. No, but real quick, a note on that. Uh, I, I'm actually super glad you're doing this, man. I'm telling you right now, if I had to choose one person to do a podcast in my life, it would be you. Well, like, I appreciate you're, it. You're the loudest, biggest, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> this is this is going to go places, and I already know. It, so no, I appreciate it's, it. I hope, start. man, it's I fun. I appreciate you having me on, man. No, I appreciate you coming. Number two! That's it, man. So, um... <laughs> couple things again so figo is the co-owner co-founder of latin atlanta cleaning company they do commercial real estate or commercial real estate commercial and residential um so check them out our past guest richie torrance he is a real estate agent if you want to check out that last episode everything's going to be on youtube as well the other one's already on youtube this will be on youtube tomorrow uh, and it's just the marketing uh, music and musings channel so check that out and then we're going to be doing this every month um, up until April because I get I got a baby coming in April, so we're probably not going to do one in April. Oh, man. But uh, I know. It's crazy. That's exciting. Um, but I do have the guest for next month already slated, and it's my sister. Some people like to be technical, call her my sister-in-law. but She's my sister. Uh, but Mallory Wilbur is going to come on here. She's a co-owner of Stylish Stems, which is a floral company for weddings. So if anybody's watching right now, you got friends, family, anybody like that that's already thinking about weddings and fun stuff, um, reach out to us. And I'll give you her information before the podcast, but it'll probably be somewhere about a month from now. So appreciate you guys checking in. Yeah. Thanks to Fika for coming. We love you guys. Sounds my you know what I'm saying? Right. Love, peace, chicken grease. Adios. Kisses. It was fun. Appreciate you. Yeah, man. This is awesome.